and welcome to my uh, new video. It is um, going to be an art part two of the um, kind of series I started about a week ago uh, where I went over um, art that I have picked up at thrift stores, mostly Goodwill, um, some yard sales, and what I look for um, in particular when I am picking out art and also just being a great art lover um, I, I like to try to give it a, another chance in life. Uh, welcome my name is Trisha. I am a part-time eBay and Poshmark reseller. Um, I guess also Etsy because I have opened an Etsy shop um, which anything that has a date on it um, that I can determine exactly what the date was that it was made um, I will add that to my Etsy store that meets the criteria and I'm gonna go over um, some of the items that I have picked up these are all currently listed in my stores let me get that set up and at the end I have some really exciting um, pieces of mid-century modern art um, they are awesome and I am uh, actually most likely going to be keeping those because they are so spectacular but I am going to share them with you at the end of the video and so up first I have this bowl here which I'm gonna classify as art because the cat print in here is just gorgeous um, it is I'm not sure if this is hand painted. It kind of looks either hand painted or transfer. Um, it is a little hard to tell on that, but it is, and I believe this is supposed to be saying made in Hong Kong. Um, this base does appear to be brass, um, but just beautiful, beautiful cat um, bowl in this ceramic. And there is a bit of a lip on here where the ceramic meets the metal. Um, you can kind of feel it. So it was definitely made um, to fit this bowl. And this next piece, um, this is very Disney inspired. I kind of believe this was handmade um, because of some of the irregularities in the wood. But this is beautiful wood inlay with the Disney um, outlines of the Disney characters in it. And you can see that it is um, like a double layer in here um, to where the back was um, put with the front. But great handiwork on this wood inlay. Um, could be a cutting board, could be a serving tray. Um, don't think it's been actually used for either, but it does have a um, like a lacquer on top of it to protect the wood but really really nice craftsmanship on this piece and this next piece I'm not quite sure how it's going to do over the camera but uh, I live in um, Western Washington just north of Seattle so this is a University of Washington silver screen that was done by the Franklin Mint dated 1977 on that and this um, oh, I guess that's kind of okay very hard to see because it is mirrored um, with the silver in here but you can see this is the what building is this the Rainier Vista I believe building and uh, the frame is in rough condition but um, I thought this was very interesting anybody who's been to the University of Washington um, this is definitely uh, kind of a fan favorite um, piece that um, would look good in anybody's office or den um, with their connection to the University of Washington. So I thought that was worth um, giving another try uh, to find new life for. Now this piece was interesting and I did have to do some research on it to figure out who she was and what this was. Um, you can see this is really, really interesting and very intricately done. Um, but what this is, is, what is her name? Um, Lady up in here, it, it says Lady Margaret, and I believe her name was Lady Margaret Payton. And she has a um, brass plaque at her gravesite in, I believe it's in a church. 
And so people will go there with paper and they will do a rub on the brass plate. And this is what you come up with. But in looking at her at the thrift store, it's like she's beautiful. She is just gorgeous. And this is a nice um, either pencil. Um, I believe it was some kind of pencil was used on this to pick up all of the beautiful, intricate designs of her dress. Um, but yeah, I, I thought she was stunning. And as I did more research into her, I thought, wow, what a fun piece that was that somebody actually went there and did that um, um, rubbing um, on the plaque to create that beautiful image. Um, this next piece is a shadow box. You can see it's quite thick um, shadow box. Really fun um, scene with the rowboat and some fishing gear and the life um, preserver lantern. Um, this one I kind of felt though that it was a bit of a two for one because you got the really fun ocean scene, but on the back, um, you got some information and down here at the bottom in particular is information on a one um, the Oil Creek and Titusville Railroad there's a ticket and there is a little souvenir flattened penny um, that they that you can get there that it says Titusville I believe it says Oil Creek and Titusville on there so this was kind of a fun two for one and in my listing I did mention all that information on the back. Um, so this is great for anybody um, nautical or railroad, um, a fan of that one. And this scene, um, just as we're kind of in winter, Christmas snowman, but I thought this was really a, just a cute scene um, in a park with a dog, building a snowman, um, just really, really cute. And it's um, the texture of the print itself is interesting because I can't quite tell if it's a foil or, or what it is um, on. You can see that it does have kind of a little bit of, if I get the light on it just right, a little bit of a depth on it. So maybe some kind of embossing or something, but really, really sweet um, little scene, little winter scene. And this next one, um, this one, I'm not sure where it's from, but it does appear to be an original um, work. Um, could be African village, um, could be in the Caribbean, um, Haitian type. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, could be um, Vietnam um, also, um, but it's a really nice village scene. And this frame has a very handmade um, feel to it. Um, but yeah, probably just a tourist um, artwork um, that you'd pick up because you were visiting the area, but a really nice image. Um, really great tones for somebody doing a 70s um, type um, area. And this next one, um, I, I loved this um, because one, they are so cute. <laughs> and two, because of the um, poem that's on this, it just says fate. Um, it is fate that brings two people together, but it's love that keeps them together. And this is by an artist, I believe his first name is Robert, and Robert Kristen, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last part of his name. Um, but it's just a really, really sweet print, very nicely framed again. If you saw um, part one, or go ahead and take a look at part one of the video series, you know that anytime I see a frame like this in particular, um, I love these kind of frames, um, the style of frame, because this lets me know that somebody really liked this print and paid money to have it custom framed. Um, and the matting on here really matches the print well. So somebody took a lot of care to create this um, piece of art and definitely deserves a second life. And up next is a really well-known San Francisco artist. Um, his name is Don Davey. 
there's information on him on the back. I have a print of his um, that's a, a cable cars and I love it. This one, for me, it's a little busy, um, but it is really, really nice. This is um, the DeVille um, Courtyard in New Orleans, um, but I have the San Francisco cable cars, which I, I really like. And, um, but this is a really, really intricate, very well done um, drawing, and he's a very good artist. Um, again, for my taste, um, even though I, I am a really big fan of his, this was done in 1976. It's a bit busy um, for my particular taste, but, um, but really nice. And again, very deserving of a second chance of life. Um, this one is just really fun. Um, it's, it's great because it's an, I love this nice big chunky frame with it, um, with the slender um, print. The, the frame really adds um, to it. Um, purple dragonflies, great subject matter because um, you know they're really fun. And um, now I'm going to forget the gal's name. Oh, here it is, Tony Spencer um, from Post Falls, Idaho. And this is a batik, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, and it is numbered on uh, number three of sixty. Um, but I really liked that it had the artist's information on the back, and it was a really fun subject matter and a very interesting design. You don't normally see um, the shape, um, so I really liked that. And up next, I don't believe this is very old, um, this particular piece, but I could be totally wrong. I know nothing about this other than the fact that I really liked it. I was very drawn to kind of the foily double image of the bird um, that's going on there. I really liked the kind of crackle frame that it's in that I believe is kind of crackled on purpose to give that um, kind of aged feeling to it. It is very strange because there's some writing on the back and it does look um, like it was kind of maybe hand professionally um, done, but I'm not sure, and it does look like the frame maybe was made for it. Uh, so I'm very puzzled by this piece, um, but I liked it, and I thought it was really, really interesting, and again, definitely deserving of a second life. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I wish I could figure out more about it. Um, and totally switching gears, this is a beautiful, very realistic, uh, let me get in here to show off how, this is so beautiful, I just cannot get over how stunning this work is. It's called um, True Companions, and I'm going to, I think it's Art LeMay, and it is, um, he, it is written down here um, in pencil, let me see if I can get that there. Um, True Companions and then signed Art LeMay and then there's information on the back about the artist. I always love that when there's information from um, British Columbia, Canada, but um, this is so beautiful, so well done, um, stunning artwork. Again, would look great in a den or an office, um, but yeah, very, very well done. And next up is very whimsy, um, very kind of, oh gosh, even farmhouse, um, maybe even Halloween <laughs> type, um, but really fun with the big sunflowers and sunflower with the moon and the little orange cat. And around it, I'm trying to figure out, it says 1882, so I'm not sure if this is some kind of well-known poem from there, um, silently one by one in the infinite meadows of heaven blossomed the lovely stars, the forget-me-nots of the angels, Harry, oh, Harry Wadsworth Longfellow. Okay, there we go. A little more information. So that is a, a little poem there. 
um, but really, really cute. And I'm going to forget who did this now. I did find it. Um, her name is right here. Lori Savoy, Savay. And it does look like this was framed in um, 2006. Um, so it does have some unfortunate distressing that it probably picked up in its journey um, at Goodwill. Um, but really, really cute print. Really liked that. Um, and this one, again, keeping with a little bit of a cat's theme here, this is the Fat Cat Frolic. Let me get that in there. Fat Cat Frolic, and there's a bunch of little fat cats. And this is by, I believe her name is Beth Hendrickson, and this was done in 93. But a really cute print. Um, cats and fish bones and lots of things going on with the border. And then again, this was kind of professionally done. Little pads on here for wall protection, but uh, really, really cute print. And this next one, uh, this is really interesting because this does have some depth to it also. It's done by Design with Scissors. So this is all hand cut, I believe. Um, although it does look like something that could be machine um, cut, it was done in 1988, which makes me think um, that it was a little more hand done um, being with its age. But it's this really cute scene, kind of like a 4th of July parade with kids. And I'm gonna try to tilt it in a way that you can see that the kids actually are, um, they're not flush with the background. They are kind of laid out on top and hand, looks like that's part of the hand cutting out, that they are um, hand cut and then um, placed as part of the image. But it's um, really cute. And then the animal border with the American flags in there. Um, really, really cute design. And the last one I have for sale before I get to my two great mid-century finds um, is this one that is by Lucy Rigg, who does a lot of, I believe, Inesco-type teddy bears and um, other types of things. This was done in, or at least it was signed in 84. Um, she does appear to have written this out to, let me see if I can get this, to Carrie, I believe, and then there's the signature um, in here, it says 84, but really, really cute print, how part of it's colored and part of it's in black and white, and the very toy room uh, border that's on it, and again, this was, doesn't look like it was professionally done, just put in uh, a little frame, um, but really, really neat design great for a nursery or a kids room and then my first find that I am I am keeping but I'm going to share because these are fabulous mid-century modern um, pieces this was done by an artist in Everett Washington um, and it's called the ranch workshop and the artist's name is I guess Sydney Headland but this is stunning and I'm going to get the camera in close here so you can see. This is like a torn paper overlay with, um, with different types of layering going on in here. And then um, some kind of either pen or paintbrush used um, to create kind of the black squiggly lines. But I just love this little piece. This is just fabulous. And again, fantastic um, uh, um, demonstration of a mid-century modern type piece. And this one that I just found really recently, um, one of the things that struck me was that this is from a um, shop in uh, Madison Avenue in New York, New York. And it looks like there may have been some information on the artist there, which unfortunately is lost. Uh, because we cannot see the name 
of the artist anywhere, but let me get in close here to try to get through some of the glare um, that's happening. But uh, these lines and these designs on here are just absolutely incredible. And again, a fabulous example of some of those mid-century modern shapes um, that we're seeing um, in other things, in other um, types of housewares and furniture. But yeah, I just absolutely love this piece and this one little bit of color in there and a bunch of muted tones. But yeah, this one is really fun. Uh, so thank you for watching the video and all of these items except for the last two are currently for sale in my um, stores, which I will have listed below. And if you have any questions or anything, uh, please let me know. And if you like this kind of content, I also do um, what sold videos. Uh, so I will go back through on everything that has sold in a week or two and do an uh, update on what sold. And if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Thank you.